Today we'll be talking about Lauer's brand new 17mm F40D for the Fujifilm GFX system. Welcome back! Uh, as you heard from the introduction and saw from that extremely wide first shot, today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 17mm F40D from Lauer for the Fujifilm GFX system. Uh, now full disclosure, Lauer did send this to me, it is a final production sample and they've asked me to test it, make a few sample images and give my thoughts on it. So with that in mind, let's jump into some pictures. So rather than run you through the specs sheet, um, which you can find on their website and on all of the different rumors sites, I thought I would bring up some of the samples that I've shot, uh, we'll take a look at those together, and I'll sprinkle in some of the specs when I feel like they're relevant. So before we do that though, let's quickly start with uh, the 0D designation. So some of you may not be familiar with Lauer and the 0D line of lenses. Basically 0D is Lauer speak for almost no distortion. Um, so with most wide-angle lenses you'll find that the edges of the frame, particularly up towards the corners, um, they'll start to, lines start to bend a little bit on the sides, whereas with these lower lenses they've engineered them as such that they basically keep the lines very very straight on the sides of the frame. So as long as you're able to level your camera and not sort of tilt up and down or left and right or anything like that, you will see perfectly straight lines all the way to the edges of the frame. That's great for architectural photographers, but that's not to say we can't use these lenses for what I mostly use wide-angle lenses for, which is landscape and cityscape. So I've had this lens for about 10 days now, and the day that it arrived, our yearly monsoon started, so we've had pretty much solid rain since then. In the couple of breaks that we have had, I've been able to get out and capture a couple of frames at blue hour, and we even got one really nice sunset, but I didn't want to take this lens out in the rain because it's not weather sealed, and especially the portion near the mount doesn't have any rubber gaskets or anything like that, so I didn't want to risk getting water into a $1,200 lens or my almost $5,000 camera body. So that's definitely something you'll want to think about when you're considering this lens, is how you're going to protect it from things like rain and splashes if you're going to be going out and shooting landscapes with it. So now that we've talked a little bit about the lens and we've talked about the 0D designation, uh, let's kick this off with a photograph from the Dongdaemun Design Plaza in Seoul. Uh, from this you can see just how wide 17mm is on the Fujifilm GFX. So for those of you who might be more used to a uh, full frame equivalency, uh, this would be around about a 13.5mm and it gives you a field of view of 113 degrees, which is extremely wide, especially when you consider that the GFX sensor is a little bit taller than say a standard 35mm sensor or an APS-C sensor. So it really does feel like a very, very wide uh, wide-angle lens. Now with this shot I was almost standing under this this lit section that you see in the ceiling here and maybe about a meter back from it and I was able to just tilt up a little bit and get the whole thing in and get all the converging lines that you see to sort of emphasize that section of the building. So in this next image we see Dongdaemun which is the east gate to the old city of Seoul. Uh, this was taken from a rooftop uh, during a break in the monsoon rains and that happily, luckily, coincided with the blue hours. So there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about this image here, so let's take a look. So first of all, let's zoom in and take a look at those stars. So Laowa has used a five blade aperture with this lens which gives you these beautiful ten point stars and these are some of the largest and clearest stars that I've seen in any of the wide angle lenses that I've used. So. I'm pretty impressed with that and pretty excited to use it when the sun does come out. So, as I mentioned, I haven't actually been able to see the sun for the past couple of weeks, but when it does come out, I do have a little bit more time with this lens, so I will shoot a few samples and update you guys on that. So, if you'd like to see those, head over to dylangolby.com and sign up for the newsletter. I'll be posting those on my blog as they get shot. So while we're on the topic of aperture, um, let's talk about the aperture ring. So between the stops is quite well dampened and you can feel each click go in really solidly. So it makes it very easy to count even when you're not looking at the uh, lens itself because of course this lens doesn't communicate anything with the Fujifilm body. So you can't see the aperture as you're looking through the viewfinder or at the back screen. So you can actually just count them very, very easily. So one more thing to talk about while we're on the subject of usability is the uh, focus 
focus ring here. Now at the front you've got this sort of ridged uh, metal focus ring and usually with metal focus rings I find that sweaty fingers in the summer make them difficult to turn but even during the monsoon I've had no problems turning this. It's also quite well dampened, it has hard stops at each end as you'd expect from a fully manual focus lens and it's very very easy to make small small adjustments on. The only thing with the manual focus here is that I've been using this on the GFX 50R and the GFX 50R has a slightly lower magnification um, EVF and the screen I don't know I can't really see that anything is ever sharp on that rear screen so that's been a little bit difficult with manual focusing on things that are more than a couple of meters away and with this shot which was actually the first shot that I took um, using this lens I found that I was shooting JPEGs, full res JPEGs, across to my phone to check that I was sharp so that I could zoom in all the way and make sure that things were sharp. Now I was sharp, I just couldn't really trust the viewfinder and that's nothing to do with the lens itself but it is more to do with the, the 50R. Now the 50S has a slightly higher magnification view for, uh, EVF which would be probably a little bit better for this and if anybody's used that GFX100 you'll know how good the EVF on that is and it'll be a different world focusing with that. Okay, so in this next image, I'd like to talk about details and sharpness. Um, before we do that, there have been a few uh, questions flying around the internet about this lens, and one of them is that, is this just Lauer's 12mm lens formula paired with the magic format converter that they made for the GFX? And the answer, according to Lauer, is yes. Now, there's a couple of benefits with putting it all inside one body, and the first, of course, is that they're able to slightly uh, realign the glass to make sure that it's absolutely perfect for the GFX sensor, so there's going to be no issues with, you know, misalignment if you've bought a magic format converter and the 12mm and a slight defect in one of them might cause a, a loss in sharpness or a loss in image quality. That's not going to happen with this, that's one benefit. Uh, the other benefit, of course, is that it's a little bit cheaper, so there is that. All right, so now that we've cleared that up, uh, let's take a look at this image here. Now, honestly, I was a little worried that an optical formula designed for a smaller sensor may not hold up when it came to the larger sensor, but Lauer assured me it would, and it does. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. So if we take a look here, we can see there's a tiny little blue sign just here. Now if we zoom all the way in on that, we can actually read the text on that sign. So even when focused out to infinity, which is something where a lot of uh, third-party lenses tend to fail a little bit, details are absolutely exceptional with this lens. So this image was shot at f11, and the great thing about being able to stop down to f11 or f16 is being able to do uh, long exposures in the blue hour and just after sunset like this without using filters. Now the filter diameter, this does accept screw-in filters, but the filter diameter is 86 millimeters, and I don't currently have any filters big enough to screw into that, so I am currently waiting on an 86 to 82 millimeter step-down ring so that I can test whether I'll get any vignetting from some of my existing filters or even from my Hyder square filter kit, the M10 kit. On the sharpness note, let's take a little note break to talk about the construction of this lens. There are 21 elements in 14 groups. Two of those are aspherical and three of them are extra low dispersion to help correct for aberrations in such a complex lens system. So let's take a look at sharpness, chromatic aberrations, and vignette. But before we do that, let's talk about the fact that all of that all that glass and all that metal weighs in at 829 grams, which feels a little bit front heavy on the GFX 50R. On the 50S with the bigger grip, it's going to be a little bit easier to hold. And with that GFX 100, you probably won't even notice it's there. So let's jump in and take a look at those samples. So in terms of sharpness, very briefly, as you can see here, things look good in the center with the corners showing a little softness at f4. f5.6 is quite similar, but from f8, f11, f16, both the center and the corners are as sharp as can be. F22 and F32 are a bit of a different story. Here, diffraction kicks in and both apertures are softer than F4. I'd avoid them unless you really need them. Now, for those of you who enjoy seeing a brick wall test or shots of a sky to test vignetting, I will be putting a Dropbox link down below with all of the raw files that I've showed you in them, so you can check those out and poke around yourself. So, back to this. Now onto vignette. At f4, the corners lose about two-thirds or one stop of light, which is quite easy to correct. 
and by 5.6 this falls to maybe one third of a stop and by f8 it's completely gone finally let's take a quick look at chromatic aberrations now you'll see a little fringing that is bluish or purplish in tint from f4 to f8 but after that it's all but gone all right so back to the good stuff now all of that optical formula means that this lens can focus down to a minimum minimum distance of 20 centimeters, which gives you, I think, a 1 to 3.6 times reproduction ratio, which allows you to get in really, really close and make some pretty interesting frames. Um, but then when you consider that this lens is about 12 and a half centimeters long and the uh, flange distance of the GFX is about two and a half centimeters, leaves you with about five centimeters from the front element to your subject. Now, that's fine for most things, but for this, uh, the wind was blowing and these leaves kept banging into the front of it, so I had to keep cleaning the lens. Um, that's a minor thing, though. It's not really, <laughs> not really an issue, but it did make uh, getting this shot really interesting. Uh, as you can see here, the sharpness when you're up that close is really good, just as it is at the, uh, at the infinity focus here. And so we get plenty of details in those leaves, but also that, although you don't really expect this from a wide-angle lens, the bokeh isn't unpleasant. It's got a little bit of the onion ringing there, but it's not something that you're going to complain about. So if you do want to get in and get some close-ups, this could be a fun lens to use as well. All right, so for the final couple of examples, I want to talk a little bit about flare. Now, as I said, we haven't seen the sun for a couple of weeks, so I haven't had a chance to see how it's going to play out when I shoot directly into the sun or something like that. But I did get the next best thing, which is pointing it into oncoming traffic, and I've had a poke around this image. I cannot see any visible flare or ghost thing. There wasn't really any reduction in contrast either, and this is quite impressive because the cars, as they come down, are constantly changing angle, and I couldn't find any flares from that light, and I couldn't find any reduction in contrast, so pretty impressed with that. Now, in the next image, um, I did find that there were a couple of small visible flares, and I've been trying to trace them back, and I think it's the the two lights that we see uh, down in the foreground here, but there's these two small visible flares that are just sort of flying up there. They're tiny, um, but they may be indicative of something that's going to become a bit of a problem for us when we start shooting into the sun. So I look forward to being able to test that in a couple of weeks' time, but it's sort of too hard to say right now. So I hope you've enjoyed the sample images and my quick review of the Laowa 17mm f4 for the Fujifilm GFX system. If you have, please do consider subscribing to this channel as I'll have plenty more content just like this coming. Uh, as I mentioned, there are plenty more samples coming from this lens when the weather starts to clear up, so do head over to my site, dylangolby.com, and sign up for the newsletter so that you can get notified when those come out. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the lens, or maybe picking up a copy for yourself, you can follow the link below over to Lawa. In the meantime, if you would like to poke around some of those sharpness tests or check out the vignette for yourself, I have uploaded the raw files into a Dropbox, which you can get at the link below. And uh, again, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.